Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is go into the patterns, into the holiday section, and into this section here, which is like Christmas presents, that kind of thing. And this is the stocking here. So you're going to choose that. It's the second one from the left on the bottom row. And say OK. And then you just want part A. And say OK. And set. And then from here, you want to save this either directly into Canvas or onto a USB stick that you can then bring up and open in Canvas. And then I'll show you in Canvas what I did. Okay, so I'm in Scan and Cut Canvas and I sent my Christmas stocking pattern over wirelessly. So if I go to my projects, it will be there. If you've got yours on a USB stick, just go to New, and then go to the SVG icon and navigate to where you've saved your file on your USB stick. So probably somewhere in your devices, something like that. But mine's already in my projects. So here it is. So the first thing I did was dragged it out to make it bigger. And then I started manipulating it. So I double clicked to expose the nodes. And then I literally just started dragging in these nodes to make it a little bit more rounder. And then I selected this top left hand node and I made this a straight line. And then I did the same with this one. I found the node to get the blue line highlighted and then made it straight and then just manipulated the nodes and then basically I positioned it up here in the corner, double click again and then made it about five and a half inches wide and then literally just manipulated these nodes to get it into a more rounded shape. I brought this in a little bit. I didn't want it sticking out as much and I leveled this one up a bit more until I got this shape. Once I was happy with the shape, I selected it went to the properties box, unticked the maintain aspect ratio and I made it 11 inches high by 8 inches wide. And then from there I went to edit, offset, made sure I was on outward, took it up to 0 0.24 which is just about a quarter of an inch and made it bevel and said OK. Then I deleted the smaller design and this was the design I cut with the scan and cut in paper to make my pattern. So I saved it, gave it a name here, saved it and downloaded it again via Wi-Fi back to the machine or you could download it as you would normally do onto your USB stick. Once you've manipulated your pattern in canvas you need to bring it back to the machine, either via Wi-Fi or USB. And then you want to cut it out. And this is my pattern here. From this pattern, I then cut two pieces of fabric that are going to be my lining. One piece of fabric that's going to be the back. And then I've got scraps of strips of fabric and I'm going to sew all these together to make the front. These can be any width and any length just as long as they're big enough to go across the widest point of your pattern. The other thing that you're going to need is a piece of ribbon or you can make your own hanging loop from fabric, it's up to you. This is, this is about 8 inches long. 
So you need a piece of ribbon of some description or as I say, make a hanging loop. And then you need a piece of fabric for the cuff. Now, if your stocking is the same width as mine across the top, which is six inches, for the cuff, you want a piece of fabric that's 12 and a half by four. So now I'm just going to sew all these strips together to make one big piece of fabric and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with it next. So I've got all my strips of fabric and I'm going to sew them together, right sides together. I'm using a regular straight stitch on the machine. take the next piece of fabric put it right sides together and I'm just going to keep doing that until I've sewn all these strips together and I've got one big piece of fabric doesn't matter if your sewing is not that straight because you can actually even put these on you know at funny angles if you want you can sew them on at, at odd angles and make them you know it's entirely up to you so this is what we've got so far and as you can see I've still got bits of stray fabric dangling along so basically what you want so long as your fabric is wider than the widest point of your stocking, you're fine. And obviously, <clears throat> so long as it's longer. So, once you get to that point, I'm just going to press all these seams and then we're going to cut the pattern out. doesn't really matter which way you press the seams for this because we're just using the fabric to make the stocking it's not like patchwork we're not nesting any seams or anything So this is how it's looking. So we're going to turn the fabric over so it's right side down. Lay the pattern onto the fabric and cut round it. There it is all cut out. So now you've got your front piece, your back piece and your lining. I'm not going to put any padding or anything in any wadding or anything in this but what I might do is do some decorative stitches across some of these lines. I'm also thinking that I found a bag of rickrack and pom-poms. I might add some rickrack to some of the sections. I'm not sure, maybe on the navy, on the dark purple sections. So you decorate it up how you want. And then I'm going to show you how to put it together. So this is how it looks now. I've added some rick rack on and I've just done some zigzag stitches on the other seams. 
I think most people have got a basic zigzag stitch on the machine. So I'm just going to cut off the edges of the rick rack. So now I'm going to put right sides together on both lots. So right sides together with my front and the back, right sides together with my lining and using a quarter inch seam I'm going to sew all the way around both, obviously not across the top, leaving the tops open. So down the side, round the bottom and back up on both sections. Okay, so that's one done. going to do the front and back section. It might be easier sewing this from the quilted side because then you can make sure that all these seams are going under the presser foot neatly. So that's that one done. So just make sure that you've got all your seams and then we're going to turn this one right side out. So we're going to leave the lining as it is, but turn the front and back section right side out. So here it is all turned the right side out now. I'm just going to give it a quick press. You, if you're going to make this bigger, if you're going to use say your 12 by 24 mat and make this bigger, before you turn this right side out you might want to just clip the seams on the curves but I didn't bother with this because it's only small. So you're going to take your lining which is still wrong side out and you're going to put that now inside your outer. To be honest, I find it easier to put my hand inside it. And then just push it into the corners. line up your seams so try and nest your seams so have your seams going one way on the outer and one way on the inner and then just pin or clip them together whichever way the seams want to go just just go with it it doesn't really matter just try and get them lined up. So that's how it's looking so far with the lining inside. So now I'm going to take the cuff piece I'm just going to run one edge through my overlocker and then I'm just going to turn it over and stitch it. But you could turn it up a quarter inch and turn it up a quarter inch again and stitch if you've not got an overlocker. Or you could use a zigzag stitch along one edge and then just fold that over and, and top stitch it. So I've overlocked this edge now. As I say, you can zigzag it whichever way you prefer. And I'm just going to turn this up just where the overlock is 
just to give me a nice neat finish but I'm going to press it just to help me. So that's how it's looking now and basically I'm going to top stitch that that seam down. Now I might use a decorative stitch or a couple of rows of decorative stitch on my machine in a slightly different in or in a different colour. You could um, you could use some heat transfer vinyl and put a name on. You could cut some shapes with your scan and cut on with heat and bond and iron those on, do some applique. But if you're gonna do that, just remember that this is gonna be folded in half and you're gonna have a quarter inch seam. So if you're you know, putting a pattern on or putting a name on, just centre it between the fold line and a quarter inch from the edge because that's going to be a seam there. So you're going to lose effectively half an inch overall, if that makes sense. But as I say, I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to use some different coloured thread and just do a couple of rows of decorative stitch. Okay, so I've sewn a straight stitch to hold the hem down and I've added some decorative stitches and I've turned it right side out so now you want to put this inside the stocking so fold it in half on your seam give it a bit of a finger press and line up that fold line with the front seam and line this seam up with the back seam and that's all going to go inside so this is right side out Push it down in so that you've got the raw edges out and your neat edge you've, where you put your seam is inwards. And then pin or clip it together. Just do it in a few places so get your, all your seams lined up together at the back. I'm going to put the hanging loop in in a, in a minute, but I'm just going to clip it into place for now. And then just push it down and make sure that all your top edges all line up together. So you've got three layers of fabric. You've got your outer, your lining and your cuff all lining up with all the raw edges all together. Now take your hanging loop, fold it in half and you're going to put this down the back seam and it's going to go in that way so with the fold going down and the raw edges sticking up and you're going to place it in between the cuff and the lining. So just push it down in there so it hangs out a little bit so you know where it is and then clip that in place. And then take it to your machine and you're going to sew all the way around this top edge. Now I can't use the free arm on my machine to do this because it's too wide for this. So I'm literally just going to make sure that this is kept out of the way. And just put it under the machine and start sewing. I'm going to start near the seam but not on it. Take the clips out, just do a few back stitches. Take your time when you're going over that back seam because you've got a lot of bulk there. And just when you stop, make sure your needle's in the down position. If your machine doesn't do that automatically, wind your wheel so that it, it does and then you can just carry on and manoeuvre around. Just do a section at a time making sure that the other part of it is out of the way. So you're not sewing through both sides.
and that's it just check it's all sewn then you can trim off your bit of hangy loop that's sticking out and then we're ready to turn it the right side out so here it is I'm just going to trim off this bit of hanging loop now again you've got a raw edge here so you can either go back to your machine and over and use a zigzag stitch you can run it through your overlocker if you want to but this is all going to be inside so you're probably not even going to see it so I'm just going to turn the cuff out now and fold it back away some of these loose threads just fold this in so that's how it's looking just going to give it a quick press so there it is finished what do you think all nice and lined inside hanging loop ready to hang you could put some little gifts in it some little toiletries and give it as a gift so i hope you like that project just another way to show you how you can use some of the inbuilt designs in your scan and cut machine I may do this as a little giveaway. If you want to leave a comment under the video, I'll um, draw a name, hopefully before Christmas. As I say, please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.